Okay, today I am reviewing a strength training book from Pavel Sosalin. He is a Soviet expert who has been residing in the United States for a long time. He introduced the kettlebell to the United States, which is now super popular, especially during this coronavirus period where people are trying to establish beautiful home gyms. It's a simple product people have been using. It was out of sale for a long time for Strong, Fist, Strong First, his company, and on it and Rogue, who are some of the biggest providers of kettlebell I know, and even on Amazon. Eventually, I was able to buy one of these wonderful cannonballs, the 20 kilogram one, which is around 45 pounds for my Americans in the audience. So the title of his book is The Quick and the Dead, Total Training for the Advanced Minimalist. There are a number of things I really like about this book. I'm just going to immediately recommend it for you and say without you know delving too much into a cliche that it is life-changing, that I've literally implemented the things from this book since about January or February of this year till now. I just completed the audio book now, but I had read articles and watched videos before. I had seen Pavel Sosalin on the Joe Rogan program where he was mentioned frequently prior to his appearance. I'd also seen him on Tim Ferriss's program, I believe twice, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, I've, I've had a long and arduous path of strength training since about 2006 or 2007, 2006, 2007, I began powerlifting with my football team in high school. While I was in college, I continued powerlifting and was visiting teammuscle.com or tnation.com a lot, where there are a lot of juice users. And uh, potentially one of them, but the one that was the most brilliant, was a man by the name of Christian Thibodeau, whose techniques and especially his, his mass power, which is a powerlifting program for mass performance power lifting program for athletics really stood out to me. And that's the one I got the most benefit from used for years and, and still to this day, relatively follow whenever I want to do squats or deadlifting. Then I moved on to Tony Horton of Beachbody fame and, and did totally different, more body weight training and, and weights for, for huge reps uh, in a, in a program, it's where I learned how to do yoga for the first time. So doing more active recovery instead of just being a meathead. And so I, I I've been involved with this and, and many other, you know, programs have done basketball, ping pong, jujitsu, so many different sports that would dictate what I'm trying to do. And throughout all of this, Pavel Sosselin's program has stood out. I've even looked at the starting strength program and appreciate a lot of the stuff that they do. I've even implemented some of what they do into my squatting with body squats or with weighted barbell squats. But the beautiful thing about Pavel is that his program at Strong First covers barbell training, covers body weight training, and covers kettlebell training. And he picked two exercises out of all of these, specifically from body weight training, push-ups, and specifically from the kettlebell world, the kettlebell swing, and sometimes he talks about the snatch, as two exercises that you can do for a really long time that will take the least amount of your time in your day and that will allow you to gain like a lot of strength. And with, with very minimal usage. So he recommends two to three times a week. But if you get really good at it, you can figure out ways to train five times, even seven times a week. So he says training and practicing instead of working out because he does not believe in going all out and fatiguing yourself and going for that last rep. Instead, he pushes working at a lower weight and making sure that the muscle memory is put in and that you increase the volume and that you take ridiculously long breaks. You take a minimum of five minute breaks. If you want to take a 15 minute break, take an hour break. It really matters how much time you have to dedicate and, and to focus in on your strength training. So the title, The Quick and the Dead is itself a kind of formula that comes from the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. Not a mistake. The guy is of Russian Orthodox background. I'm of Ethiopian Orthodox Christian background. And the, 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 the faith professed by the fathers of the bishops at Nicaea and Constantinople are, of course, big to both the Russians and to the Ethiopians. And so the quick and the dead, otherwise phrased as the living and the dead, refers to this mentality of being quick, being... Uh, able-bodied, being able to move quickly. The imagery he uses is of this fierce feline, of this of this leopard. 
And this leopard is also accompanied by his harsh Soviet mentality and masculinity. This no nonsense, no bullshit mentality. Cut the fat, trim the fat, just give you the bare bones. That's the minimalist aspect. The advanced aspect is that it comes with a lot of research that the Soviets used for decades in strength training and were at the peak of the strength training programs. So he emphasizes efficiency, strength, and transferability to athletic performance. He wants you to do between one and 10 reps and no more than 10 reps and take long breaks and do this repeatedly. He suggests using Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays as your normal workout routine, but you could easily do Tuesdays and Thursdays or Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Just make sure that you are sticking to a routine so that your body can get used to it. He talks about the various benefits of working out early in the morning fasted versus working out in the middle of the day versus working out at night and really suggests that you do not work out or excuse me, let me use his language, train or practice right before bed. So that's an interesting caveat. And so the kettlebell swing he finds as the kind of peak of all workouts. And if you're just looking for an all around body workout to hit your core and your abs and your back and your lower legs, he, he thinks this is great. He wants you to clench your abs. He wants you to clench a penny between uh, your butt cheeks or at least an imaginary one as well. And he wants you to tighten your forearm and your grip and everything. So it's really a full body exercise for the push up. He loves, of course, the one-armed push-ups as well as standard push-ups, but he really likes the explosive push-up or the plyo push-up where you do a push-up and you launch off of the ground. I made it super plyometric by launching off the ground with my hands and with my feet, and I've also implemented standard push-ups. I've also done the kettlebell swings two-armed, and I've done the kettlebell swings one-armed. The one-armed helps my grip strength. The two-armed helps me to, to push more weight and have more overall strength. Anyway, I listened to it in audiobook because he's a very intense man with an intense voice, and I need that kind of mentality, kind of like a drill sergeant. Jocko Willink, I think, has that ability. I think Pavel Sosselin has that ability to inspire, to to motivate um, C.T. Fletcher of uh, It's Still Your Motherfucking f Set fame has that mentality as well. So some of these hard, strong, masculine figures are, are needed sometimes to rile you up, to get you to get after it. And it, he's given me a way to work out during the pandemic. So again, I've been doing this for months. I started off with a 35-pound kettlebell that was gifted to me uh, by my best friend and his wife. And uh, the both of them have been on my program here. So you can find them, find Rustine, find Rebecca on here. Then I was able to purchase the strong first 45 pound or 20 kilo kettlebell. And I've been working out from my home with the kettlebell swings and with the explosive pushups. And I recommend that you do so as well. This is generic strength that I'm building up. I can't wait for all this pandemic stuff to be over so I can get into my sports specific strength, which is for me practicing jujitsu drilling with life partners and then eventually developing a Muay Thai expertise. And both my Muay Thai and my jujitsu are going to be complemented by the general strength built up by my push-ups and my swings.